Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we have Lowry and Felthos on Eye of Horus. Back in this map, last time we had, I think, a match between Drone and Felthos, which is one of the analysis casts that I did, but this is not an analysis cast. I will try to analyze as best I can in the time constraints of this match going normal speed. That is without pausing throughout in order to point out players doing this or that. But yeah, this is more of the standard fair entertainment cast that I generally do. And we are going to be watching for preview of the tournament. Tournament on Saturday, as I mentioned before, and Felthos is one of the players. Lowry is organizing it, so Lowry is not going to be playing in it. Anyway, we'll start up. So Felthos over on the north side of the map going for Cloaky Bot, while Lowry in the south side going for Light Vehicles. Now I have Horus is one of those maps. Actually, Felthos went for Cloaky last time too, and it didn't work out especially well, as I recall. It was kind of difficult because Lowry had to basically deal with the fact that Sorry, Feltas had to deal with the fact that Drone had a, I think, heavy tanks. No, tank? heavy tank or light vehicle start. Anyway, I deal with the fact that Drone had more mobility, and Feltas didn't really attack as sneakily as they could have. Now let's see if Feltas learned from that and is going to try to attack in a more sneaky manner. Try to generally make use of the cloakies as the cloaky sneaky bastards they are, and not so much on trying to basically be defensive against extremely mobile units. We'll see how that goes. But right now, Feltas is supposed to mar far more on building their base while Lowry has a lot of Dars coming here. Four Dars coming in to scout out pretty heavy assault force on scouting. Following up with some Scorchers, which will be coming in a bit later. But yeah, the Dards just getting a very wide view of everything going on, making sure they know exactly where Feltas is and what Feltas is up to. And they indeed do. At this point, Feltas knows nothing about Lowry, completely in the dark, and is about to rectify that situation. Then the Glaives over to the south side of the map to deal with that. While Felthos over here is... Sorry, Lowry over here. They have their factory up, they have their Scorches going, and their main base is pretty much completely set up. But right now, Felthos is actually ahead economically. That's one thing, Lowry is not that ahead economically, and in fact doesn't have any raiding going on yet. Like, no raiding has really happened, so these darts... Bit of a waste except for the information, which is very valuable. Don't get me wrong. But at this point, Felthos is still ahead. Materially speaking, Felthos is ahead. It's just a matter of these glaives they can get in here, scout out a bit. Now, Lowry does have radar. So Lowry is aware of these glaives coming in and will be setting up the Scorchers right at this pass, too. Nice, nice spot to put them. I totally agree with that. Because the glaives are gonna be coming up either through here or up the pass, and Lowry calls it. Now, Lowry. Lowry actually didn't have vision of that. That's just game sense. Lowry just called that. Although, oh, never mind. Nope, the call has gone wrong a bit. Scorchers aren't completely out of range, though, and they are ultimately able to get that once the Glaives come in. But Felthos doesn't want to push forward quite yet. Felthos doesn't see what's there, probably realizes that delaying it will be a good idea, and it's probably kind of moot point, honestly. Those Scorchers were in position to begin with, but a Metal Ice Raptor was destroyed. Not completely useless. Not the most effective. But yeah, that was actually, actually, you know, come to think of it, given that the Metal Extractor didn't have any builders nearby, that's a pretty big deal. That's actually fairly big. At this point, Lowry and Feldhaus once again even. However, Glaze coming along the west side of the map, getting rid of a Mason. Wow. So Feldhaus is doing a fair amount of damage here, and Lowry trying to deal with this, but yeah, Feldhaus is being sneaky. Feldhaus is doing exactly what they should have done against Drone in the match that I analyzed. And I know Felthos looked on their own as well, so I'm not saying, oh yeah, I analyzed it and Felthos learned so much, now Felthos is a better player because of my cast. No, 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 no. He, they looked at the replay on their own. And they've learned. They have Moses definitely learned. Lowry, on the other hand, just sort of knows where to go. They've got their scorches around, making sure not to let the glaives in, being very wary about that, very cautious. It's a way to play against Cloaky Bot, but it does mean that Felthos gets a lot more free reign. I mean, pretty much the entire north side is kind of softly under their control, and they can easily set up defenses to more completely consolidate it. At the same time, though, Lowry not letting up, pushing heavily into the center. Glaives from Feltas are coming in to deal with that, and they're doing a not great job. Got rid of the radar, though, but only got rid of one of the defenders. The reigning defender's still alive, and there is still a nice defense wall. As well, oh wow, that, that Lotus is not up yet, so this Scorcher... Dealing a fair amount of damage, and it looks like the southwest side of the map, we are going to see these glaives coming back in. Trying to deal a bit more damage. No 
Oh, wow, no metal charge in the southwest side of the map. Sorry, Paltos. Bit of a disappointment there. Everything is in the center. Lowry has focused entirely in the center, and in fact is setting up a nice attack over in the northwest, which is breaking the entire wall. So both the northwest and northeast have been broken pretty completely. And Lowry just trying to get more damage in here, getting rid of another metal extractor. No defenses here. This entire area is free. Up, actually, same with the northeast. There are still scorches hanging out there. So both the northeast and northwest, Lowry is just ripping things apart. Absolutely ripping things apart, but at the same time to the south, Glaive's going in for Lowry to try to get revenge, and they will not succeed. Scorchers coming in for defense, as are some Lotuses, which are already built. Lowry was very complete and comprehensive in their defense in their main base. And the attack looks to be fairly successful, too. Even with defending Glaive's coming in, the Scorcher's still not dead. This Conjurer needs to not build, and Felthos noticed that right in time. That Conjurer remains alive, but at this point, Felthos has lost a lot of territory. Lowry pretty much has free reign over the entire map. Felthos, I mean, that that changed pretty quickly in a, just a minute or so, or 30 seconds even. Felthos went from feeling pretty secure about the north third of the map to pretty much being stuck in their starting area. At this point, though, they do have enough glaives. They should be able to secure at least one corner. But that is not what they want. I mean, Lowry really trying to keep Felthos honest here, doing a good job of it, but at the same time, Felthos not able to do much to deter Lowry. The Lowry will be pulling ahead considerably, but at the same time, Felthos deciding to deal with the southwest side, actually deal with the northeast and northwest sides. Attacking them the west first, getting rid of one of the Scorchers right off the bat, a damaged Scorcher, but these Glaives are not in a good position. They're not nice and tight together. They will not... Okay, now they are. Felthos rearranging them beforehand. And in the northeast, Okodachi... Wow. That must be a morph. Yeah, that looks like that was a morph from the Scorcher. Yeah, Scorchers do morph from Kodachis. If they get three experience, and one of them apparently did. That Kodachi will be... Actually, will it be that useful? I don't know. Kodachis are a bit harder to use, I think, than Scorchers against Glaives. Because the weapon takes a lot longer to kill the Glaives. And doesn't attack as as continuously as the Scorcher weapon does. And yeah, actually, the Kodachi does go down. Admittedly, that was just... Well, actually, Morph does cost metal. It's not free. It costs the remaining metal of... Get it, what it would to build the unit. It's like, in this case, Scorchers cost 130. Kodachi's cost 180. And you can see the Morph in the bottom right, or the center right of the tooltip, is 50. 50 metal takes 10 seconds. That is not free. <laughs> so that death was a little bit pointless. But anyway, doesn't matter. Louder still has a lot of damage potential here. Failthaw's moving into the southeast at the same time, though. Getting rid of all these metal extractors. No scorch in position. These gladiators should get rid of two of them, no problem. The third one will be a little bit tricky to destroy. But two of them are pretty much free kills. Although, the longer Failthaw's waits, and Failthaw's is waiting way too darn long. Failthaw's not even focused on that at all. Focused on the northwest side of the map instead. Has switched over to Hovercraft completely, in fact. Not even focusing on the Glaives at all, just going straight for the Hovercraft. And the Glaives try to fight the Scorcher, do not win, as is typical. But it doesn't really matter at this point, because Daggers are the focus now for Failthos. And of course, Eye of Horus, as with most large maps, typically has a very long Raider phase. And that's what we're seeing right now, we're seeing a continuation of the Raider phase, hasn't really changed much. Southwest side of the map, however, Failthos... Ooh, nice. So Failthos has gotten rid of this pretty quickly. Now, Scorchers are coming in from the north, but these Glaives will be able to take out the metal extractors and should be able to surround one of the Scorchers. Get rid of one of them, maybe. Yes, get rid of one of them. Probably won't get rid of the other two, though. If they divide up the Scorchers, then they should be able to, but it's not likely to happen. Now, at the same time, the Commander going along the northwest side of the map, building up metal extractors and basically trying to invade, invade Failthos' territory. And... Once again, Felthas moving these claves over to the north, the, sorry, to the southwest cliffs. As usual, a very good move there. I mean, these these scorchers can't really get up. They sort of can, but not easily. At this point, Lowry has switched over to Air Factory. Felthas switched over to well, still in hovercraft, mace, and dagger. Well, Lowry switching over to consolidation phase. I mean, Lowry is pretty well set up for map control. So they're switching over to a lot of slashers. See, slasher being built up, as well as ravens for continued raiding. And the mace, sorry, halberd's coming in to try to break up this entire northern central, well, central section, northern from Lowry's perspective. 
And the Halberds, they need to stop firing, although they're not going to know about the Raven until it's too late, but if Feldas is paying attention, they will not fire. Feldas is not paying attention, the Halberds are going to die. Feldas, where were they looking? They were looking at the main base. Not even focusing on the Halberds at all, they are going to die, and they're going to die an embarrassing death. Because they were not in defense mode. That was unfortunate. At the same time, over the northeast, we have Felthos trying to push up. This one, Felthos, is pretty stuck. Okay, more raiding coming from Lowry. These glaives over here haven't done much recently, but they have raiding coming from Lowry. And there's territory over here in the northern third, but Lowry has about one and a half times as much metal, not including reclaim, compared to Felthos, and has air. I mean, Felthos doesn't even have any anti air. Felthos did get an airplane plant of their own, but has not yet built anything from it. Oh, never mind. They're building Swifts. Might be a little late, though, because Swifts are already in play for Lowry. They can easily get more. They can easily keep air control at this point. And the problem, of course, being the Ravens still have to deal with these defenders, which won't work too well. In fact, that Mace doing a nice job finishing off the Raven. But really, that was the defenders, ultimately, that did that. But still did some damage. Got rid of the Raven, and we'll be able to continue pushing through, finish off where the Halberds left off. And the Glaives over on the southwest side, continuing their harassment. However, Lowry is much better set up now. These Slashers, so you see some of the Slashers look like they're trying to defend this hill just in case the Glaives come over it. The Slashers overall are just going to be a better option. Because if Lowry isn't paying attention, they work better since they're going to be stopped as long as they're in a good defensive line. But yeah, they're going to be stopped, they're going to be able to fire. These Slashers getting rid of these Glaives, finally get rid of the annoying Glaives that had been plaguing Lowry for some time. So the southwest corner is completely free to be developed. The southeast corner, on the other hand, getting hit by a mace, but not really well developed at this point. And Lowry just pushing forward, setting up a nice front line, but the maces over in the center have gotten rid of most of the economy in the center, or at least the north center. Going for the south center, trying to finish off this entire crater area. Whether they are able to do so remains to be seen. It looks like they probably won't. That Lotus being the biggest thorn on their side, though. The Slashers, however, are catching up and flanking them. One of the maces has gone down, and this first defender about to reload. That mace is about to go down pretty much now. Yeah, the next defender volley is going to kill it. So no! No, they do not succeed. However, the next volley probably will. At this point, Lowry is losing a fair amount of ground in the center. In fact, these daggers doing a very nice job here. Getting rid of pretty much everything, flanking the Slashers. And the maces will be able to take care of... Well, one more slasher goes down. Two slashers go down. Actually, the mace is doing a surprisingly good job. And the dagger, of course, coming around back. But the swift's able to deal with this. No problem. I'm very surprised Feldas went for swift's and not hawks. I'm also surprised that Feldas is not building a few flails in between everything else. Because flails are pretty much the anti-air. Especially against... Okay, especially against gunships. But even against planes, flails are not a bad option. I'm surprised that flails have not been built. But anyway... This maze over in the southeast has gotten rid of the metal extractors and will probably try to continue into the main base. Though admittedly, Lowry can pretty much stop it at will. And Raven's coming in here. Where are they focused? They are focused on what well, they should be focused on. Defenses and metal extractors. Primarily metal extractors, though Lowry gunning radar instead. Yeah, just get the metal extractors. I'm very surprised that people don't do this. Although admittedly at this point, get the defenses first, then get the metal extractors. But yeah. I'm kind of surprised people don't tend to spread out their bombers among all the metal extractors. Like, split them across. It takes one bomber per metal extractor. That will be a pretty easy kill. How many ravens are there right now? There are six ravens. Yeah, that's six metal extractors per volley. That would rip apart Feldos's entire economy at this point. And see, Feldos is really focused on... Oh, wait. Are they focused on overdrive? I would think they would be, but I'm actually not totally sure. I mean, Feldos right now doesn't have a whole lot of units. They certainly don't have a whole lot of metal extractors, but they do have nearly as much metal as Lowry, so it's probably a lot of reclaim. And it would look like that is indeed the... Actually, is it the case? That's got to be overdrive. Nope. No, there's hardly any overdrive going on. Frankly, I'm a little bit shocked, but it looks like there are enough metal extractors to support that. It really doesn't make any sense. There's got to be some overdrive going on that I'm missing. Anyway, Lowry's still ahead, though. Very much ahead. Very much ahead militarily as well. I mean, that was a nice attempt by Feltos to push in, raid in, get the center, but at this point, the center is being very, very quickly rebuilt by Lowry. Feltos, I am still surprised they haven't gone for flails. 
If they use his halberds well, they might be able to break the center once again, but it's going to be tough. There are Thunderbirds coming in. That will stop pretty much everything Felthos has. I mean, mostly stop everything Felthos has. I mean, not completely, but very likely will stop it. At this point, Felthos not building anything but Swifts. Focus entirely on Swifts. A few halberds, but mostly Swifts. And southeast side of the, sorry, south center side of the, center east side of the map. That's what I want to say. I don't know why the map is flipped 90 degrees in my head. It's not. I just forgot cardinal directions briefly. Anyway, yeah, center east side of the map. Bit of attack going on, but north center, that's the real, that's the meat of it. Felthos coming in here in the north center with some halberds. At the same time, the north east is being attacked by Lowry and the north center being defended pretty heavily. These halberds are, are they in fire mode? Yes, they are in fire mode, which means they are not defended. That, oh man. Actually, yeah, the shield right there. That shield icon. Actually, not just a shield icon. The fact that they are this, this here, fire at will, not the best state for halberds. So admittedly, the gremlins are having a field day with the ravens. There are still a lot of ravens. Looks like about eight ravens belonging to Lowry. That's that's still pretty embarrassing. Though two of them have died. Actually, three of them have just died. That was that was pretty good. Still, Scorch is going to come in here, get rid of the gremlins. The halberds doing a decent job. Actually, halberds doing a wonderful job. In fact. With the Ravens being pretty heavily gutted, the Raven numbers are pretty low. And we now have... Wait. Scythe. Okay, there we go. There's the Scythe. Yeah, okay, here is Scythe, and I know I've got to look at that, but that actually isn't doing much. Breaking through a little bit. One Metal Extractor goes down, but that's about it. Honestly, not a whole lot was done by that Scythe. And at this stage of the game, it's rather difficult to make anything actually get done. Perhaps going to the center... The main base would be a bit too risky. The best thing to do really would be over to periphery mexes. Take those out. There are no defenses around them. Just kill them. Just slow down Lowry's economy. But at this point, Lowry is so far ahead. So very far ahead. I mean... Veltos at this point has about 14 metal extractors. So actually, yeah, that was pretty much all metal extractors before. Yeah, they got 14 metal extractors with some overdrive. Well, Lowry has the rest. The rest of them belong to Lowry. And that is going to be... The difference maker, and at this point, Lowry has, my goodness, how much, okay, 12k metal worth of units, compared to 5.1. Bear in mind, neither commander has died so far, actually. Both commanders are still very much alive. Oh, Thunderbirding, mostly getting rid of the solar collectors, but also getting rid of everything but this mace. However, that does get the gremlins uncloaked. The halberds can do too much, they can do a bit, but not a huge amount. The gremlins are the big problem, but they have just now gone back to getting able to fire. These swifts once again threatened, and Crasher's coming in here to try to deal with the swifts that would be coming in from Felthos, but there are basically none. Felthos keeping all their air units in their base, while the battle rages on, and these crashes are pretty much going forward to their deaths. Able to run away, though. There are more important things for the units to focus on, and those are no longer... Relevant. Actually, it doesn't matter. The crashes are out of the way. The crashes are gone and saved. So, Veilthos, once again, cannot actually use those air units too effectively. But at this point, Lowry has air control. Lowry's had air control for the longest time. I mean, all these Swifts here, 22 Swifts belonging to Lowry compared to 5 for Veilthos. Yeah, not going to happen. Not going to work. Veilthos is making a valiant effort. I'm a bit surprised that Veilthos hasn't tried to break through any of the sides. But at this point, I'm not even sure how much Veilthos can do. I mean, as time goes on, Lowry can get stronger and bigger. Lowry has the economic advantage. Failed us trying to build up some defenders in the center. Actually, this could be fairly effective. But that Scythe was a good idea. This thing, that Scythe would have been a good idea if it was able to get to the back and deal the stuff over in the back. And Lowry's commander actually taking a fair amount of damage. The mace will go down, but Lowry's commander could go down to a couple bombers. A couple ravens coming in here. I don't think Failed us is going to go for it, but... That commander is very nearly dead and has no auto repair system to speak of. And is Feldas' commander still alive? I thought it was. Yeah, it is. So Feldas' commander has been inside the base the entire time. Very much alive. Not really doing much besides the metal energy income, which doesn't matter much at this point. Really, at this point, Feldas just needs to go for an attempted killing blow. He needs to try to deal as much damage as they can. Get rid of Lowry's economy as best as possible. Break through it. I mean, after that, they have to break through all of Lowry's forces, but at least at this point, the problem is that they're basically they're losing army. And the thing is, Lowry has half the economy of Felthos. Sorry, double the economy of Felthos. So Felthos needs to be extremely efficient at how they kill units, and they're not doing so, especially being that 
Okay, Lowry. Lowry wins. Viltox throws in the towel, realizes they can't really do too much against this. And that was game. And no, they couldn't. That was like eight minutes or so of just valiant uphill struggle. I think if they'd gone along the periphery, it might have worked a bit better. It wasn't as well defended, but still that Stardust, bit of a pain. Possibly killed the commander when it was further forward, actually. That that might have done it in. Overall, though, I think that Cloakie might just be a poor starting choice on this map. I mean, it's one of those factories that is kind of convenient because it is pretty standard. Kind of easy to remember how to play it. Like, you know, Glaive to Warrior to Rocco and just build whatever you need for counter structure. But honestly, on a map this size, the speed advantage becomes a bit of a problem. Or speed disadvantage. And while Feldhaus was doing some very clever tricks with the Glaives, they don't last long and he couldn't have attacked the main base. Even getting to the periphery mexes was tough because the Scorchers could just rush in and tear them apart. Trying to harass that out. Especially against someone like Lowry, who has very good game sense, as we saw there. Like, he just, Lowry just knew exactly what to do and when and where. With the Scorchers, it was just perfect placement for pretty much all of them. Especially near the beginning, where it really counted. And this area here, this ridge, that was very nicely done. Yeah, Fail Thoughts, I don't think Cloakie is going to work on this map. Keep trying, though. I mean, it's worth experimenting. But in the tournament, don't bother. Seriously, just... If you're on this map, if you're putting this map, probably go for light vehicles or heavy tanks. Or maybe air, but I don't think that Cloakie is going to do especially well. Depends on your opponent, though. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you for watching, and tune in for the tournament that will be once again Saturday, September 20th, 2014, at 10 p.m. UTC. Sorry, 10 a.m. UTC. So it'll be 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Pacific Daylight Time, rather. It'll be 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and I think 6 p.m. in Australia. Like, Eastern Australia. 6 or 7 p.m. Yeah, stay tuned, and then Europe, it's somewhere around 10 a.m. to noon. Tune into that. That will be, like I said, in a couple days. But for now, this is going to be it for me, my stream tonight. Thank you all for watching, everyone, and have a good night.